नमस्कार सुप्रभात अनि गुड मर्निङ नेपाल यहाँहरु सबै जनालाई धेरै धेरै स्वागत छ हाम्रो कार्यक्रममा आज बुधबारको दिन म र मेरो सहप्रस्तोता सरिता सिंहवाली आइसकेका छौं सरिता वेलकम गुड मर्निङ टु यु नमस्कार वेलकम एन्ड गुड मर्निङ नेपाल आज बिहान सूर्योदय 6 बजे र 33 मिनेटमा भएको थियो भने सूर्यास्त साँझ 5 बजे र 8 मिनेटमा हुनेछ हामीसँग धेरै कुरा गर्न पर्ने छ हामीसँग अतिथि पनि हुनुहुन्छ त्यसैले म चाँडै चाँडै आजका आजको दिन कस्तो छ भनेर सोधि हाल्छु र इभिनिङ रोस्टरमा पनि लागि हालौँ ला एकदम रमाइलो घमाइलो छ सरिता बिहान आज अरु बेला भन्दा अलिकति चाँडै अलिकति उज्यालो पनि भयो आज मिनिमम टेम्परेचर 10 थियो भने अब दिउँसो 20 21 डिग्री सम्म हुन्छ अहिले 12 डिग्री सेल्सियस छ अलिअलि चिसो दिन तर घाम लाग्छ रमाइलो दिन पनि हुन्छ ओके तिमीले यो आजको दिनको जानकारीका साथसाथै आजको साँझका हाम्रा कार्यक्रमहरु के के छन् हामी एकचोटी हेरि हालौँ आजका कार्यक्रम पछि यहाँलाई स्वागत छ आज हामीसँग विशेष अतिथि हुनुहुन्छ आज हाम्रो स्टुडियोमा आइ सक्नु भएको छ नेपालका लागि अमेरिकी राजदूत र्यान्डी बेरी र उहाँलाई हामी वेलकम गर्नु भन्दा अगाडि एउटा सानो भिडियो तपाईहरुलाई देखाउँछम भिडियो हेरौ समीर हाउ आर यु आई एम गुड हाउ आर यु गुड टु सी यु शल गो यस अफ कोर्स So, Your Excellency, this—I mean, this is amazing. It is, isn't it? And but uh, after the earthquake, how bad was it? Indeed, it is. It was bad. Uh, you know, the the, the earthquake in 2015 really uh, inflicted some very major stability issues uh, into this building. I mean, if you take a look at some of the cracks that are appearing yep, here, yep, you know, yep, we had yep. parts of the ceiling here uh, that had uh, that had collapsed and mm. were beginning to come down. Mm. Uh, I think the stability along this 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 exterior wall here was in such bad shape that, in fact, the UNESCO folks that we had consulted with uh, were somewhat doubtful that we really? could actually save the the structure. Wow. So, you know, the, the the wall had been separated, so we saw a lot of instability on on this side, a lot of instability out of the roof. I mean, basic, you know, structural concerns that really could have doomed this building to history uh, with with that belief that it maybe was not possible to restore. So, your excellency, I mean, looking at this, it looks like, you know, a lot of expertise has gone into this, you know. I mean, there's a traditional point of view, there's the international point of view. How did you choose the team? Like there's the international team and there's the local team. How was that chosen? Well, you know, this project actually posed a very complicated challenge to us because, you know, historic preservation and really working to uh, preserve the integrity of the mm. structure in a historically important way is always our gold standard. Mm. But this project was different because it also required technical input to stabilize the building right. because the damage which had been so significant. Yes. So this was a, a rather more complicated process for us. But whenever we look at one of these projects, we uh, open up an open tender. So, uh, you know, organizations uh, were able to submit proposals right. and we took a look. Right. Ultimately, we ended up choosing Miyamoto Global Disaster Relief because they had experience on the technical side that could really take care of the most urgent task, which was okay. stabilizing the structure. Because right. Right. again, you know, UNESCO had some doubts we could actually preserve the structure. They came in and take, took a look and said, we can, we can do this. Okay other really important part of this process. Uh, again, we put a, a huge emphasis on partnerships when right, we do this. Right. So uh, because this is obviously a, a, a Nepali landmark, right. a culturally, historically important building, right. partnership with the government of Nepal through the Department of Archaeology, uh, always okay. critical. Right. But also the skill set to really take a mm. look at the essentially Nepali characteristics yeah, yeah. and the tradition yeah. here uh, really requires us to partner effectively with local artisans. Right. This is a really important part of every project we do here is because right. we want to make sure that we are right. honoring historic traditions, methods of construction. Mm. So this really was a I think perfect marriage between you know high technology, high tech uh, ability to stabilize and to build this structure back better, mm. but then adding in the component of local skills. Government of Paul and archaeology department sort of partnership to make sure that we were 
combining all these in a, in a, in a way that means uh, not only is this place restored to its original grandeur, but it's done so in a way that makes it safe and secure and stable for future generations also. Wow, amazing. Your Excellency, welcome to Good Morning Nepal. Thank you, Sarita. Thank you for welcoming me here. It's my pleasure to be with you this morning. As we can see, Gaddi Boitok looks <clears throat> amazing. What are our future plans to sustain it and maintain it? First of all, doesn't it look amazing? It uh, just looking at those pictures really uh, stirs something uh, within me. I think a key part of this really is to understand that now Gadi Baitak is going to be more accessible. So through the launch of a sustainability plan yesterday with the Minister of Aviation, Culture and Civil Aviation, uh, we really rolled out uh, jointly uh, what the plan for future usage is, which includes the opening of a museum on the, on the, on the ground floor and uh, the, the, the uh, beginning of guided tours throughout the, the main hall, which I think will make Gadi talk accessible to Nepalese and to international visitors really for the very first time. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. It is, it is. It, it looks, and, and I, I can't wait to just go there, and I was looking at the pictures, it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but coming back to Good Morning Nepal, Master, <laughs> uh, we were very curious. Um, you, you look very fit and energetic. <laughs> How do you start? What is your morning routine? because I'm sure our viewers would like to know. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I start early in the morning. Uh, so I have, I have two young kids, so you know our house is, is, is full of chaos when, uh, when I'm getting ready in the morning. Uh, but I make sure that, uh, you know, because I have a pretty energetic schedule, I have a lot of passions that I work on here, plus I have responsibilities as, as, a, as, a, as a father also uh, to keep myself fit. So I also make time to exercise every single day uh, just to make sure that I'm on top of my game uh, all the time. Okay, this is a question morning show will have to ask. Are you a morning person? I am definitely a morning person. Okay. okay. Uh, now, going back, you were here 10 years ago, as, um, and then again now you are here mm. after 10 years. What are the changes, like drastic changes that you've seen? Well, you know, it's been a pretty substantial change that, you know, when I was living here before, back in 2007 to 2009, of course, the country was really coming out of a traumatic period of its history. Mm -hmm. So the conversations that we were having with government, with political parties and with, uh, you know, with civil society really was about stability and stabilization and about the need to put structures into place. It's a completely different conversation these days where we're talking about how to grow the economy, how to create greater opportunity for all Nepalis. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a pretty exciting change over a decade. I think it's important to always uh, note just how far the country has come in the last uh, 10 years. Of course, there's a lot that still <laughs> remains to be done, and sure. I'm really excited to be working on that. Yeah. Uh, Ambassador, I was curious, uh, and I want to ask you, that you seem to have you know, gone all around Nepal and done everything. Right. Uh, so one, what is one story that, uh, from Nepal that you take around the world and you share with people? Uh -huh. Maybe uh, something on top uh, of Yeah, well, look, I make it a priority to get out and, and to do as much as possible. That I think really the beauty of this country is in its, its, in its marvelous diversity. So I've had a chance to travel to you know, most of the cities in, in, uh, in the Terai. I've had a chance to travel through the mid-hills up in the mountains. Uh, I've had so many meaningful experiences, but I think, you know, in, a, in the sense of a landscape, just seeing the, the landscapes of Upper Mustang, for example, or seeing the shrine at Muktinath, you know, and just getting a sense of the deep, deep culture uh, and historical roots in this part of the world uh, is really amazing. But I think, first and foremost, I'd point out uh, the people that I've met. That mm -hmm. I, unlike, uh, not, not unlike many other Americans, have come back and again and again and again to Nepal. Uh, it's not the mountains that brings them back. It's the people and it's the culture. That's why I'm really uh, focused on interactions with young people, for example, uh, and always trying to understand uh, Nepal's very complicated uh, history and culture a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Wow, and then we get this a lot, like every time uh, when we have visitors who come to Nepal, they mm. say it's people. So if you have to describe Nepali people, how would you describe them? Uh, well, I have a lot of adjectives, warm, hospitable, caring, open, uh, you know, willing to share their culture. I mean, this, this I think is the hallmark that wherever I've traveled in Nepal, whether it's here in Kathmandu or whether it's in the most remote village, I, I really sense that warm welcome and hospitality. And that I think is what brings Americans here time and time again. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it's the mountains off it and that brings them in the first place, but it's not what brings them back. Oh, mm -hmm. It's so nice to know that, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and again, uh, looking at, I'm sure you must be having a bucket list. 
So what is the remainder of the bucket list that you have for Nepal? <laughs> well, you know, I, I have not had the chance to trek as much as I would, uh, I would like. So, you know, I want to get up onto the Long Tong Trek. I want to, I want to do the Annapurna Circuit. I want to go up to Manaslu. I haven't had a chance to do any of those, uh, those three uh, just yet. But there are still a number of places that I haven't seen. I haven't had a chance yet to, to travel out to the far west mm -hmm. uh, since, I've got, since I've come back. So I have a, I have a pretty extensive bucket list to, to, to tick off. Okay, again, going back to Asish, uh, the question that he um, uh, asked earlier, if you are somewhere outside the world, as you are known as tra um, traveling ambassador, mm -hmm. some story that you have to say about Nepal, what would that be? Uh -huh. Well, you know, I, I think one of the, one of the uh, encounters that I've had that has been most meaningful is I had the chance out in Nepal Ganj in rural Banka district to, to go and talk to a bunch of, uh, a group of women who were looking at sort of sustainability in, in agriculture. And, I, you know, I think that it was, it was very meaningful to me to see in these rural areas the role of women uh, changing, where women are in much greater control of their finances, they're much, in much greater control of making decisions within the family. Mm -hmm. And you could just sense the, the confidence and the self-assuredness uh, that I think is really a, a very promising, uh, uh, you know, thing to observe here. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a chance to talk to a 25-year-old woman who was not only running her household and was bringing, uh, you know, money in and organizing a household, but she was taking care of parents. She was running a small business on the side. Um, and this to me, you know, gender uh, equity and the role of women here has been a very, very important focus of my time. Uh, and it was, it's really nice to see that on the ascendancy. Um, I've seen the same thing also uh, in, in a number of other places where given a little bit of opportunity and a little bit of resource, uh, women are incredibly capable of, of, of emerging as Nepal's newest, uh, newest uh, group of leaders. Mm -hmm. And another uh, important aspect of uh, U.S.-Nepal relationship is education. Mm -hmm. A lot of students travel to America to get higher education. What would be your message to them? Because it, how is it now in America for education mm -hmm. uh, right now? Because uh, I'm sure people are curious to understand, is it still uh, an, an first destination or uh, you know, something else that, that they might expect? Uh, absolutely it is. You know, the, the, I think the U.S. offers a world-class education and I, I think none of that uh, is different than, uh, than has been the, the, the case in the past. We continue to see a, a, an enormous number of Nepali students studying in the United States. Uh, they, they currently rank, I think, around 11th globally for the number of foreign students in the U.S. Uh, and that's not per capita. That's in terms of just sheer numbers. So we, we have about 13,000 Nepali students at U.S. universities and all across the country uh, at, at any one time. Uh, and, but I think on a per capita basis, Nepal must be, uh, must be the first or second uh, mm -hmm. most prominent uh, uh, source of, of foreign students in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, since you travel a lot of places, especially rural areas in <coughs> Nepal, mm -hmm. what are a few things that we should focus on? Mm -hmm. Well, really, uh, about, uh, I think, two important things I would note. One is you had mentioned education. Mm -hmm. I think um, primary education is, is certainly something critically important, something that we're investing in here heavily in partnership with the government. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, if you, if you create educational opportunity, if you, if you give young students, particularly girls, the, the, the ability to think critically to improve their reading and writing skills, mm -hmm. that's fundamentally important. But that has to be, I think, married up to uh, opportunity, which is the second part of this, that you have to create opportunities for people to do something with that. So that they've got the skills, they've got the, the ability, and then they can turn that into something productive for their families, for their communities, for their country. I think those are two key messages, and I'm always looking at that. You know, I even reflect on my own experience in the U.S. because I grew up in a rural area. Uh, I grew up in a family where, you know, my parents had not had the benefit of higher education, uh, but they made both education and opportunity priorities for us. And it's, it's opened so many doors for me. I know fundamentally that uh, given those two, two key assets, uh, people can achieve anything. Mm -hmm. And another aspect is probably entrepreneurship. Uh, what do you see in Nepal? What, how is our entrepreneurship environment? What is your feel about the entrepreneurship uh, environment here? Some of the most exciting experiences I've had have been interactions with young, young entrepreneurs. I think, you know, even if you just take a snapshot of the tech sector uh, by its own, you know, this is an emerging uh, sector. I think it offers great promise for Nepal and its economy. And it's driven by people in their 30s mm -hmm. or 20s. Uh, who are thinking outside the box and looking at the global economy in ways that I think, you know, are, are new. They're very uh, exciting. So, you know, I think there's a great deal of, of promise here. Mm -hmm. I think, again,
again, the challenge to, uh, to, to all of us is to create the kind of environment that allows that to thrive, allows it to create employment opportunities, that allows you know, the, uh, the inspiration that these young people are demonstrating really to trickle uh, out to, to other younger people so they can see exactly what's possible with a little bit of ingenuity and, and frankly, a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to go back to Good Morning Nepal show. Mm. Uh, what is it that you would like to share it with our viewers who are watching you right now that they have not read about you or not known about <laughs> yourself? Uh, well, I don't know that there's much people don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm, a pretty, uh, I'm a pretty open uh, sort of person. I think one thing that I'm always interested in communicating to Nepalis, whether I'm meeting them for the first time or, uh, or, or subsequent encounters, whether it's rural or urban, is to really help them understand uh, the great deal of respect that, that, that I have for the history and culture uh, of this place. Mm -hmm. um, it's one reason, you know, we, we were just looking at these beautiful pictures from, from Garibaitak, for example, you know, to really demonstrate that um, I believe that the greatest uh, natural asset that Nepal has, in fact, are not the mountains, uh, and it's not anything so uh, so simple as that. That in fact, it's it's the human resource, it's the, the the uniqueness of the culture, it's the approach of the people. That's where I think we need to invest, and that's where I'm really really focused on using you know what what I using all the tools in my arsenal really to create again those those opportunities. So you know I think uh, you know I often get questions about uh, you know on our our social media. I'm very very active on, around cultural holidays. I really you know as you're seeing here, mm -hmm. I'm trying so a little bit of last down in Janakpur. Um, this is really important to me because this is part of the, the experience of being in Nepal. I think it's really important to not only uh, do it, but also demonstrate that, uh, you know, of getting outside of the bubble and, and attempting to really understand and pay proper respect for the culture here. Mm -hmm. And Ambassador, I think what you're doing is amazing. And, and what, why I think we all should appreciate is, you know, we are about to celebrate Visit Nepal Year also. Mm. So whenever you travel out of Nepal, what are the questions that people ask uh, about Nepal to you? There must, there must be a lot of curious people asking questions about Nepal. There are. Well, thank you for the compliment. And I think also for, you know, the tie-in to the Visit Nepal 2020 year. I think this is a great opportunity. I do get a lot of questions. I think that people generally in, in my own country uh, may not know a great deal about Nepal sometimes. Yeah. But they do have a general sense that they that it's a positive feeling that they that they get. So I just try to encourage that and also to have this conversation. Again, many people will know about the natural resources or about yeah. about you know the about Everest or yeah. about uh, about trekking uh, or about you know those his, those those parts of Nepal's history that are tied up in that but what i try to do is really to talk about this other more important element and that's really again about about people and culture and what i find is that if i encounter someone who's been to Nepal either as a peace corps volunteer or who visited here as a tourist a long time ago they instantly understand what i'm talking about because that is is something that i think really distinguishes Nepal from all other uh, all other places mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I am, I am, uh, I, I'm very hopeful that we'll see a big increase of, of, of tourists coming here. Uh, you know, we're using our, my social media feed also to promote this. We think there are some really interesting opportunities coming down the, down the, path, uh, down the path to really promote Nepal's uh, tourism infrastructure. Um, I, I would note why I think this is important also is that, you know, Americans uh, currently account for the, the, the third largest uh, national group that visit Nepal. Uh, we know after looking at statistics that when Americans come here, they spend money in, in, in hotels, they spend money out in the villages, they mm -hmm. support Nepali industries, they're very, very interested in, in what they can do to, to, to engage. You know? And I think the quality of that kind of tourism is, is obviously something we want to encourage, but because it's great for the economy, it's great for understanding of Nepal in my own country, and I think that's absolutely a win-win for both of our countries. Okay, since we're talking about Visit Nepal, you know, because of the turbulence that uh, our country went through and then people read it in news and everything, uh, Americans did not feel very safe to come, our, come to our country. But how is it now? What do they think? To uh, come as a visitor. Right. I, I think people are very, very ke keen to come here as visitors. And I, I don't sense from my interactions with American citizens a great deal of, of, of concern. You know, that, 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 the, I think some of the elements you were talking about were really dispensed with a decade ago. Uh, you know, but I think we have a completely different set of, set of circumstances now. Uh, you know, this afternoon, uh, I have the chance, in fact, to, I'm having a, a town hall for American citizens. Uh, so I, I'll have a chance to hear from them directly. Some of them are locally residents, some are tourists that are visiting here, but I'll promise to pose that very question, uh, because I think that's really revealing of how people, you know, are, are sensing. But 
the bottom line is, is that they're here, uh, they're engaging, they're all over the country, uh, you know, I think uh, really experiencing everything that Nepal has uh, to offer. I don't think we would have seen this, this increase in tourism if there, were, uh, if there were any kind of hesitation. But I think, again, the country offers so much in terms of quality for, you know, for American travelers here, uh, and that's certainly what we're going to encourage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, we, uh, you know, we have to now sort of wrap up uh, because, you know, we always run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But uh, now looking back at Gadi Baita, mm. uh, and I think it's an amazing initiative uh, thanks to you and the fund. Um, so what is now new project that you're looking at through mm -hmm. the fund? The ambassador's fund for you know conservation. Right. Well, um, look, I love this program. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, devoted more than three and a half million dollars in 24 projects uh, for the last 15 years through this program. We get more money out of this program at the State Department than any other country in the world. Period. Mm -hmm. uh, we're continuing along that along that path. So we recently announced that we'll be funding the restoration of the uh, octagonal Krishna Temple in Patan's Durbar Square. Mm -hmm. uh, in just a couple of weeks, I'm going to be down to uh, note the completion of the Charnarayan Temple also in Patton's Durbar Square, uh, but we are right now soliciting the next round of proposals for this program. So I think that we are uh, in, in a growth phase uh, in this, which is certainly something I want to encourage. And we're exploring some opportunities to some, do something a little bit uh, more unusual during, to promote Nepal uh, Visit 2020 year and to make a bigger than normal uh, investment, I think, in this country's cultural uh, preservation efforts. So I couldn't be uh, more happy about, about the success of this program. Okay, uh, before we leave, I can see that you love Nepal and I see that Nepali, Nepali people, they love you also. After you. your tenure is over, any plans to come back to Nepal? <laughs> I, I, I will absolutely be back. Uh, you know, I, I first visited Nepal in my 20s, uh, back in the early 1990s, and uh, it, it made an impression on me then, so the, the chance that I've had to, uh, to come back as a tourist subsequently, but also now twice to work and, and live here and to get to know the country a little better has really been one of the personal and professional honors of, of my entire life. So uh, I don't have any specific plans, but I can guarantee that, uh, that I will be a familiar face here even after my tenure ends. And if you don't, you know this is on record. <laughs> <laughs> I will take that as a promise. All right. So. Okay. Um, and, and I think now um, at the end, while we are about to leave, um, any, anything that you want to share with, uh, you know, Nepali people about the Gaddi Baita and the conservation, maybe at the end, mm -hmm. anything you'd like to share more? I think, you know, the quality or the, 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 the approach that we take uh, in these is really emblematic of, of America's engagement here, and it's very, very important. So I wanted to talk about that briefly. I think that the process that we go through with any of these um, projects of, of cultural uh, uh, preservation, uh, the consultation, the fact that we understand that these are Nepali heritage sites. These are Nepali's, uh, the cultural heritage of this country. So we are there to support. We're there to provide technical expertise where we can. Human, res uh, sorry, uh, uh, financial resources, if that uh, makes the difference in restoring some of these, which we know. But in a critically important part of this is consultation, consultation, and engagement with local staff. So mm -hmm. all of our restoration is done with local staff. It is done uh, in historically appropriate uh, a manner because I think you know that at the core it's important that these monuments are built back in a way that is culturally and historically respectful. That I think the failure to do that would be a form of cultural corruption. You know that we have to preserve the methods and we have to make sure that skills are imparted to people who are actually doing this work. Our role here is completely in terms of supporting that process because we want to grow these monuments back into the shape that they were, but we want to invest also in the skills and capacity uh, so that can be done more, in, more uh, organically. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your time. It was our pleasure to have you in our show. Thank you for making our morning awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Uh, धन्यवाद भन्दे र एम्बेसडर लाई पनि धन्यवाद भन्दे अब कार्यक्रम बडा बिदा लिन्छम गद्दी बैठक अफिसियली हिजो देखि चाहिँ सुरु भयो यहाँले पनि विस्तारै अब एज अ दर्शक जान सक्नुहुन्छ हेर्न सक्नुहुन्छ फेरि पनि यहाँहरुको दिन शुभ रहोस् अब हामी बिदा माग्छम हामीले हेर्दै गर्नु होला नमस्कार धन्यवाद नमस्कार हाम्रो कार्यक्रम हेरिदिनु भएको र मन पराइदिनु भएकोमा धेरै धेरै धन्यवाद हामीलाई कान्तिपुर टेलिभिजन एप डाउनलोड गरेर पनि यहाँहरुले हेर्न सक्नुहुनेछ तपाईलाई मन परे पनि मन नपरे पनि प्रतिक्रिया भने जरुर दिनु होला त्यो कमेन्ट सेक्सनमा र युट्युब मा हामीलाई सब्स्क्राइब गर्नुस् र बेल आइकन थिचेर हाम्रो कार्यक्रमको बारेमा रेगुलर नोटिफिकेसन पनि पाउन सक्नुहुन्छ थ्याङ्क यू फर वाचिङ गुड मर्निङ नेपाल